I will speak about the way how it is possible to measure the velocities of clouds of plasma at the cosmological distances. And today people are observing this and they're detecting objects at redshift from 0.5 to 1 and they are able to give upper limits or measure the velocities of very distant clusters of galaxies. And main result is the following, that even at redshift one, all, uh, how to say, clusters of galaxies and galaxies are moving with negligible peculiar velocity relative to the CMB at that place. Uh, cosmic microwave background and uh, how to say, large scale structure of the universe, they're expanding according to our Bible, according to present theory of universe. This is also very important confirmation and this full confirmation of Copernicus principle. In any direction where we are observing, everywhere uh, large scale structure is moving Together with, uh, together with the CMB. First, I'm showing now to you the map of CMB obtained by Planck and before by Boomerang, by W map. And this is beautiful map which shows how uniform is our universe. Uh, look, the temperature of CMB today is 2.7 Kelvin. And uh, this was measured at Bacobia Firas. And uh, several spacecraft, and now the best data are coming from Planck, are showing that this radiation is practically isotropic. And the most bright red points here are only 200 micro K, micro Kelvin, brighter than average temperature. And blue most blue uh, spots are less than 200 micro K dimmer. This is uh, our universe. It's very, very uh, uniform and very, very isotropic. But uh, truth is the following that from the sum of um, picture which Planck, W map, Boomerang are showing to us, in reality they delete the biggest anisotropy on the microwave sky. And this is biggest anisotropy is huge in reality because its temperature is 0.6 of, um, 0.6 of uh, milli, it's bigger than, uh, it's few milli K. Therefore it is uh, hundreds or thousand times stronger than that beautiful picture which I showed to you. What people like Jean-Luc Puget and Lyman Page did, they took out this component because it was too big for them and they are measuring this component with very, very high precision. How it was interpreted? I was, first what I heard about uh, CMB after its discovery was that we can measure dipole and quadrupole uh, components of CMB, distribution of CMB on the sky. Quadrupole is not measured properly up to now, but dipole is measured with huge precision. I will remind you this beautiful picture from Scientific American, this experiment of Muller Smoot uh, on U2 spy plane. In Russia, this plane is very well known because it was shot uh, near Urals, maybe some uh, elder people remember this, this was a normal, at least in Russia, it was enormous reaction. But this spy plane was also used in very peaceful scientific use. It had radiometer, decatype radiometer on it, and it was flying, observing practically uh, in the beginning northern hemisphere and then from Peru, southern hemisphere. And they were looking for velocity with which our solar system is moving relative to the CMB. If CMB is isotropic, then it provides us unique, only one reference system, which is if we will move relative to it, immediately dipole component will appear. 
and what was observed, I already showed to you, uh, in the direction to constellation Leo, sky was much brighter than in opposite direction. And this, all spacecraft see this, and this is our motion, our motion relative to the background. You can see here, this vector is measured, and we are moving with velocity close to 600 kilometers per second. I will not tell you about five or seven digits which Planck, with what W map and Planck measured this value. I do not remember even how many digits, but they are a lot. But how then people understood immediately our solar system, we are here, is moving around, rotating around galaxy with velocity between 250 and 300 kilometers per second. And this is our vector of motion. Oh, this is our vector of motion. It's in opposite direction. And uh, if we will take out this velocity, our peculiar velocity of the center of our galaxy will be, will be only 350 kilometers per second, twice less which is observed, because part of the velocity is our rotation around center, so around central part of our galaxy. But in addition, our Earth, you see here, this, this plane, is rotating around the sun with velocity 30 kilometers per second. And this dipole is different in the, for example, every three months or every half a year it is changing. And people can measure this, this 30 kilometers per, per second. And then if you have many channels like Planck has, it is possible to uh, cross-calibrate them because dipole should be the same in different channels. And it's great calibrator. Uh, in addition, obviously, we are getting measuring with very high precision velocity of our Earth around the sun, but everybody knows this because we know what is astronomical unit and what is the mass of the sun. But this was great picture in Scientific American and I like it mm, very much. But I will speak now about most our galaxy is tiny and solar system is extremely small, but there are objects which are biggest in the universe, very, how to say, already gravitationally bound systems, and we can even apply virial theorem to these objects. These are clusters of galaxies, you see them here, and in these clusters of galaxies, we are observing in one potential well, for example, few thousand of galaxies. In other, in, uh, we, if they are not so rich, there are only a few hundred uh, galaxies. And these galaxies are moving in different directions with velocities of the order of 1,000 kilometers per second. This because it's very deep potential well, and there is intergalactic gas with temperatures from 5 keV, 3 keV, uh, okay, I will tell in Kelvin, it is uh, 30, 000, 30 million uh, degrees, uh, it is 100 million degrees in different clusters, temperature is absolutely huge, about which we are dreaming in our labs to make the, thermo, uh, to make the energy due to the fusion. And what is important also, gravitational potential here is huge. Therefore, you see here many gravitational lensing. Uh, these uh, galaxies are amplified twice. Once by the huge gravitational potential of cluster of galaxy, and in addition by Hubble Space Telescope. This is, uh, they, every new opened cluster of galaxy opens for us possibility to observe extremely distant cluster, uh, galaxies which are much above uh, cluster of galaxies. And these clusters of galaxies has a lot of uh, intergalactic gas, and this gas, intercluster gas, and this gas has optical depths of the order of 10 power minus 2, probability of CMB photon to scatter there is of the order of 1%. These are the, it was at some moment the most um, detailed 
computer simulations of the universe made by Volker Springle in Institute for, uh, Institute for uh, Astrophysics in Garching, Germany. And you see how many particles is here. I would not read the number but an enormous amount, and people, dark matter particles, how they interact, and how they're growing from the initial quantum perturbation. And you see here the structure, and this structure shows you the web, space web. It's very thin slice of the universe. In opposite case, we will not see it. Uh, in this, uh, cross this picture, uh, dimension is of the order of uh, 10 billion years, but sickness is only, for example, 16 uh, million years. Very thin slice. And here you see the structure. And in the knots of this structure, everywhere is a cluster of galaxies. And you see this cluster of galaxies, and their number should be of the order of 100 150,000 rich clusters of galaxies in the whole universe. And today I will tell you that people are very close to the time when we map every cluster of galaxies in the observable universe up to our horizon. And there are several methods. One method is X-ray astronomy to see hot plasma, and another method is to observe CMB. But I will tell you very simple things, then I give, present you extremely simple formula, not as Professor Yao, but just for a student of the, I don't know, second year. If you will, I was a student at that time, and when Zeldovich told me, look, what will be if this, there is gas in the cluster of galaxies, uh, what it will do with CMB? And I discovered that situation is very bad. If photon is coming here and scattered in this direction, oh, sorry, then immediately another photon number two will come, and this photon will scatter and replace first photon, and cluster in isotropic field of radiation will be absolutely invisible. This very simple, you just multiply Polyno, uh, due to orthogonality of polynomes, I will not speak here about this, but this was very simple. I was a young student. I came to Zeldovich and told, no, cluster is invisible. And what he was able to tell me, he told me, Rashid, go and seek. <laughs> there should be something. And I will tell you what came from this something. Yes. This is Zeldovich, as you see at that time, and his three stars for all Russian weapon, uh, atomic bomb, hydrogen bomb, and first Russian reactor. And this was me at that time, and you see that years are changing person enormously. You see this. But it was very easy to show that there are three effects. First simple, simplest effect is in reality thermal, oh, excuse me, thermal effect, it is connected with broadening of the line after scattering on hot electrons, and then you can, if there is, a, this is a laser line, you see on the right side, after scattering it is broadens, and right wing is much more strong, not much, but stronger than the left, uh, than the left wing, because uh, rich photons, are rich uh, electrons, uh, hot electrons are giving their energy to photons. And if I will make this for many lines, this Planckian spectrum, that spectrum will be of this type, there are distortions. And we can be predicted that there will be decrease of the brightness in the direction of clusters with hot gas. Second is kinematic effect, which I will describe you more. We can measure velocity if cluster of galaxies moves relative to CMB, then there should be change of the brightness. And the third effect, there are acoustic peaks. After scattering on the cluster of galaxies, due to orthogonality of polynomes, then they all disappear except quadrupole component which provides polarization. And therefore you will just detect the blurring 
of the radiation. These are three effects. Uh, first two are observed. Blurring is waiting a new <laughs> Lyman Page and Jean Lu to discover it. Let's go further. But before thermal effect, which very well observed. You can see here uh, the uh, channels of Planck spacecraft, and you see that blue is LFI, and others are uh, HFI, high frequency instrument, instrument of the Jean Lou Puget. In reality, this, uh, this um, how to say, this also HFI channel. I am very grateful to uh, PIs of the Planck spacecraft because they chosen this channel specially so that in one channel, it is shown here as yellow, effect is zero. It is negative at lower frequencies and positive at higher frequencies. And Planck can absorb many frequencies and to show that V is blue, flux is decreasing, you see here uh, at the bottom just observational results. You see the shadows on the sky in the direction to cluster. Nothing is very yellow, the effect is zero, and he is positive. It's very, very interesting. Planck and Atacama Cosmology Telescope and South, telescope, South Pole Telescope, they confirm this easily. Just according to the simple theoretical formula. Planck discovered on the sky more than 1,000 clusters of galaxies. You see them. All these are clusters of galaxies discovered on the whole sky bar Planck. And this is, for example, coma cluster of galaxies, which is discovered, uh, where effect is discovered very far from the central part of the cluster also. This is really pleasure to see to this data. Clusters are especially interesting because, as you know, everybody who is starting to learn cosmology knows that when we have the standard, um, how to say, ruler, and we go in the universe further and further, then in just in normal geometry, this angular dimension of ruler will decrease. But in cosmology, in our cosmology, dimension will be decreasing, decreasing, and then it starts to decrease, and then will start to increase. These are, you know, beautiful effects of cosmology, and every student who is uh, learning it knows this. And what is interesting, that clusters of galaxies from redshift 0.2 up to redshift 3, if there are clusters, all these clusters have practically the same angular dimension, and it's very close to one arc minute. Therefore, this telescope, like Atacama Cosmology Telescope or South Pole Telescope, they specially have angular resolution of the order of one arc minute because they can see these clusters easily. It's very, very good and interesting. And you see this beautiful instrument on the South Pole and on Atacama Cosmology uh, site, and these are the result of observations by SPT at 100 50 gigahertz, and you see here shadows on the sky. You see them. These are new clusters of galaxies, which are at redshift 0.75, 1, 1.3, 1.7 now. And I think that Lyman Page will tell us about new results of the survey of the Atacama Cosmology Telescope, 20,000 square degrees, where additional 1,495 clusters of galaxies are discovered. It's very interesting and very uh, just exciting. This is a picture uh, made by Lindsay Blim from um, Chicago, and she shows all clusters of galaxies, this blue, discovered by Rosat spacecraft, very small amount. Red is Planck. Planck has uh, angular resolution of the order of 5, 10 arc minutes, therefore it is good for observing nearby clusters. But this is South Pole Telescope. And these are clusters of galaxies which have redshift higher than 1.5, 1.75, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0
two and so on. Now there are several. And this is beautiful. Look how many of these clusters were discovered by South Pole Telescope. Now what is interesting, there is how technology is developing. I can uh, tell you that in 2016, South Pole Telescope started 3G phase, and in focal plane, there are six, 16,000 bolometers, cryogenically cooled bolometers, and uh, they accelerate enormously the scanning time. Very, very rapidly you can scan and discover such objects, just shadows on the sky. Next March, we are planning to go to, to launch this spacecraft, Spectrum Röntgen Gamma, SRG, with German uh, Erosita telescope. It is here, this one, Erosita, and Russian Arctic Sea telescope. And this, teles this uh, Erosita should discover of the order of 100,000 clusters of galaxies, and how everything looks if we will really on the whole sky detect practically all existing clusters of galaxies. This prediction, this is Erosita limit, you see here, and this is what people in SPT are dreaming to get just from ground using CMB observations in the microwave spectral band. And you see that for high redshift clusters, uh, it will be more sensitive than erosita, but up to redshift 0.6, erosita will be much more strong than ground-based instrument. There are reasons, but okay, I will not speak about this. May I now return to the velocities? You remember that I started with velocities relative to CMB. Uh, most important thing which is there, if there is very distant cluster of galaxy, and in this cluster of galaxy electrons are scattering radiation, uh, then th this radiation will be invisible if electron is at rest. But if electron is moving, then in the system where electron is at rest, you will see dipole component. You see it in very distant cluster of galaxy in its system, not in our system. Now, I will remind you that Thomson, scat uh, Thomson scattering has angular distribution one plus mu square or one plus cos square theta. It's again what we are learning in the theory of fields in, the, in Russia, at least Landau Lifshitz, in the second year of your education. Uh, this Thomson scattering, very easy to find it as dipolar radiation. And when you integrate over the whole sky, this dipole component, uh, one uh, plus cosine, and you integrate it over one plus cosine square, due to orthogonality of polynomials, you are getting zero. Therefore, after scattering, this system, you see you had the dipole, after scattering, this dipole disappears. Just no in the system of electron. But when you are moving to our system, you again see the dipole. It is you twice making transformation and including scattering, which kills dipole after scattering, and this is the kinematic effect. It is possible to observe and to see the, not only the motion of the solar system, but to observe any object on the sky, any cluster of galaxies in the sky, and to prove that there at the rest, on their moving, on the CMB, which is moving from us with relativistic velocity at redshift 1 or at redshift 1.7. And this enormous possibility, beautiful, it is described in this, also these transitions from one system to another in our paper with my mentor Zeldovich in 1980. And this is the formula. You are 
radial velocity of the cluster of galaxy multiplied to probability of scatter, optical depth. And these are how changing the spectrum if velocity is 3,000 kilometers per second, if peculiar velocity. You see when source is moving towards us and from us. Huge difference. And also a frequency where effect is zero is also moving. It's possible to measure. 3,000 is a lot, but I can tell you that these are the best published data result from Berkeley and Stanford University, Sarah Church measured it. She had to use the experiment just to measure it. And at that time, theorists were telling that peculiar velocity is 1,000 kilometers per second. And he, she came to me and told Rashid what I can do. We spent five years, we got this upper limit, you see here, and now theorists are telling that peculiar velocity is only uh, 350 kilometers per second. I told her that Sarah, Sarah, it is, you measure it, this cluster is at redshift 0.55. You measure it, the difference in velocity, how the cluster is moving from us and how uh, CMB is moving from us, and this difference, is very, very small. It is of the order of 1,000 kilometers per second when recession velocity is of the order of velocity of light. It is, new, it is just enormous precision. I am very glad that now people can measure this. These are uh, NICA-2 experiment uh, from France where they measured internal velocities in the cluster of galaxies which are of the order of 800 kilometers per second. Uh, theorists are predicting that in the universe uh, there is a, uh, <laughs> clouds, the, if they are attracted to each other, they are moving in this direction and or perpendicular. There are also very, Jerry Astriker is here. It is uh, this second order effect is very well described by Vishniak and uh, Jerry Astriker. Uh, but when we were modeling clusters of uh, superclusters of galaxies, you see that thermal effect everywhere is positive from every cluster inside it. But uh, kinematic effect, one massive cluster is moving towards us and two are moving in different directions. We can measure the velocities of objects in superclusters of galaxies. And I was very amused by paper of Hent and Spergel and Atacama Cosmology Telescope team when in 2012 they used positions from Sloan survey for 100,000 of galaxies, of very massive galaxies. And they, they measured what, what are the velocities of gas in their vicinity. Just stuck it. And I can tell you, they found the predicted effect. Gas is going <laughs> towards the gravitational center. But you need to add more than 100,000 of galaxies. And uh, Hent and his advisor, David Spergel, they did this first and published. And these are results from South Pole Telescope. There are additional results from DES and so on. There are many discoveries in reality. And I should, before I finish, I'm just telling, can tell you that there is also motion during the uh, motions in plasma during the time of reionization. And also the universe is patchy. Reionization is not everywhere simultaneous. This formula which we wrote with Zeldovich in the 1970 paper where acoustic peaks were predicted, and this is a formula. And this is the formula uh, showing how during the growth, density perturbations are growing and how velocity originates. It's uh, this very simple thing just for students. And, oh, okay, I should show also, this is uh, uh, my co-author, Hernandez Montaguda, Carlos, uh, he measured uh, he tried to find mystic baryons using kinetic effect. 
This is a full map prediction uh, of the kinetic effect on the whole sky during the ionization. It's really rather strong for a ground. Yes. Now there are beautiful X-ray colorimeter results from <coughs> Hitomi spacecraft. In a few years, much more bolometers will be launched to the sky, and it will be possible to measure from the ground peculiar velocities of clusters of galaxies. Internal bulk motion, uh, tracers of recent major mergers or AGN feedback, it also will be possible to measure from the ground, but turbulent broadening of the lines will be possible to measure using X-ray astronomy data. And this is beautiful thing. We will understand how everything is moving at redshifts of the order of one. Yes, and I should finish again with words which I told uh, when I got the prize that we were waiting with Zeldovich more than 30 years. Unfortunately, he hasn't seen even one real experimental result, not for acoustic oscillations, not for baryonic acoustic, uh, acoustic oscillation, no for acoustic peaks, no for this thermal effect and kinematic effect. But I can tell you, in any case, he always was telling me that theory without experiment is nothing. And you see here, I am writing that great progress in solid state physics, uh, cryogenics, technology of grazing incidents, X-ray mirrors and bolometers, able to detect sub-millimeter sources of celestial radiation, development of spacecraft technology made it possible during the last 20 years. And I'm very grateful to hundreds of physicists, engineers, and astronomers who made it possible. And I can tell you that uh, this is South Pole Telescope. You see the not northern uh, glow, but southern glow you can see here. You can see Milky Way. And I know more than 12 people from Chicago and Berkeley who spent, who agreed to spend one night on the South Pole. And I am myself a theoretician, and all my life I was, I was walking during the nights. And what is one night? It's nothing. But please remember that night on the South Pole is at least half a year. <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay, then let's uh, thank... <laughs>